So let's say you wanted to create some text and have it basically protruding from the surface of this strangely shaped object. Uh, I've had that happen for many reasons, for bases, for characters, for sets, for vehicles. And so let's say you want to create some text. So create some text, go to Shift A, and create your text object, which will create at origin. I'm just going to focus on that. And so I'm going to make a few adjustments to this before I move on further. So just to make it a little easier to deal with, I'm going to go to uh, Alignment, which is under Paragraph. I'm going to set it to Center, and I'm going to set it to Middle, so it just every lines it perfectly at Origin. And I'm going to change my text. So let's just say uh, Sign Text, <laughs> just to keep it simple. And to make to edit that text, you basically just go into edit mode for the object, just like you would for a regular piece of geometry. Now, this isn't actually a regular piece of geometry, as you can see. It doesn't actually have vertices or faces or anything like that. You basically just get a cursor, and you can just change the text. You can convert that into geometry later, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So I have my text, and I have my large, large object. My text is obviously too small for the object. So in my properties under transform, I increase the size to whatever size I want. I'm going to bring it forward a little bit here. Go to my front view. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And we'll pull it up. So let's say I want it to sit right there in the middle, and I want it to follow this contour. Now, as it is, I can't really do that. It's basically from straight geometry. Uh, what I could do is I could just come in here and go to the geometry setting and I could extrude it to make it give it a little bit of thickness and then I could move it back and just crash it into the surface, but that doesn't work either. Uh, another thing I could do is I could convert this into geometry and then manually adjust things. Um, but one thing I've started to do to make things a little easier, or I've been doing, is I'll add a deformer and I'll go to deform and set it to sh uh, not shrink wrap but uh, bend so it'll simple deform go to bend and I'll try to bend it now the problem with this is that since it's n it's rotated 90 degrees it can't really rotate it the way I need it to simple deformers are a little picky when it comes to your geometry so I can't use a simple deformer, but I still want to wrap it around the surface. So one of the easiest ways to do that would be to go to deform and create a shrink wrap. Now with shrink wrap, it basically does kind of what it said it's going to do. It allows you to basically wrap an object or a piece of geometry to another object or piece of geometry. So in this case, I'm going to leave the faults on for now. I'm going to choose the target. Now it's going to wrap to this surface, so I tell it to wrap to that surface. Now as you can see, is trying to wrap the surface. It's doing a decent job of wrapping it to whatever's behind it, but as you can see, it's having trouble telling what's close to it, what's far away from it, because it's trying to get to the nearest point, and all the points are kind of in odd places here. So I'll try a different setting. We can try target normal project is a good one to go with, but it does create some distortion on your surface. Also, since my text is sort of extruding here, it's trying to just flat, it's trying to use every part of it and trying to connect it to the surface. You could play around with the settings to try to diminish that. Uh, you can set limits and things like that about what's actually being affected, and sometimes that'll help. But generally, what I'll do is I'll do this set it for positive and negative under your axis, under your subdivision levels and axes, you get positive and negative. This is so when it's trying to do projection, it's trying to do it in both levels. I'll go back to my text, I'm going to set the extrude to zero. As you can see, when I set the extrude to zero, you can see that the text is actually projecting perfectly onto the surface. It's bending a little bit, which means it's probably a little too big for the area because I want it to sort of fit in the box nicely. So I would go back in and I'll decrease the size a little bit. Just so it fits into this area nicely. Okay, and so now I actually need it a little thick, so I'm going to go back and add a modifier. 
I'm going to tell it to solidify. And I'm making sure the solidify comes after the shrink wrap. And let's try to extrude it out a little bit here. Now, as you can see, it's actually starting to do what I want, but we're getting some distortion from that extrusion there. Now, I've encountered this before, and usually this is actually caused by the way it actually generates the text and inconsistent normals on the surface. So generally what you have to do if you want to get something clean out of this is you actually need to convert your text object into geometry and then make sure all of the face normals are facing the same direction. And that usually helps to clean this up. The text that was generated by Blender isn't consistent uh, and isn't consistently clean topology. It's not uh, clean topology at all actually. It's just quick topology. So it's all triangles, and they're not cons there's not a consistent number of triangles, not a consistent volume overall. So we're getting very different results from each letter. Like the I here, you can see it's crashing, the T is crashing. And so what we need to do before we actually even project this on there is to clean up the topology of our text, which means we're going to need to convert it from a text object into geometry. And I'll show you a really quick example of that going to disable my solidify, disable my shrink wrap, and so we just have our text. I'm going to simplify the text just to make it a little bit easier to clean up. So I'm going to convert it, and we'll just call this text, and I'll make it all caps, just to make it really easy to clean up for this video. And so I'm going to pull that forward. Uh, that's another thing, I'm going to make sure that your text isn't crashing with the geometry it's projecting onto. Slightly in front is fine, slightly behind is fine, but not half and half, usually one or the other. And so now I'm going to take my text and convert it into geometry. So just right, once you have the text selected, select your text, right click, and choose Mesh. It'll convert it into geometry. And so now you can actually go to edit mode, and you can make some adjustments to the topology. Now one might be tempted to just simply smooth this and move forward but that would still leave you with bad topology because it would make the subdivisions based on the existing topology, which is not necessarily what we want. It'll sort of bend and deform in all of the wrong places. So if I translate this, you can actually see there's extra topology in here we don't even need. So what we can do is quickly go through this and clean it up. And so that just means making a few adjustments, deleting some edges, deleting some faces. In some cases, it may be, even be simpler to create your own text so that you know it's clean. Uh, or at least create the curves instead of creating the text itself. Let's actually try that instead. And then you can just fill it in, fill out the topology yourself. So we've got a text object. I'm going to come into my curves. I'm going to tell it instead of to, let's see, where is it, fill mode? None. And that will just leave us with curves, which will be a lot easier to deal with. So right click and convert to mesh. And then we go to edit mode. And then we can select all of our edges. And we can just fill them in. So select it, select your edges, F to fill it in. Edges, fill it in. Edges, whoops. Try to get all of your edges for each letter. Fill it in. Edges, fill it in. Okay, so now that's super clean, and now we can come in and add some to divert mode, and we can add in some edge loops to clean it further, clean up our topology. So from there to there, there to there. there to there. Okay, and already that's going to be much cleaner than what we were getting before. You can add some additional edge loops so we know we want this to actually bend. And so we're going to try to make sure it's going to bend consistently and evenly. So make sure you're adding edge loops, you're trying to keep them relatively consistent in distance. And basically, you want to go through all of the other geometry and do the same thing. Now, uh, I've gone through all the t all the text and done some cleanup. Probably made this one a little more uh, complex than I needed to, but here we go. 
So we've got text now, and it's in a good position. So let's see how it performs this time. So I'm going to first do my deform and shrink wrap. Set it to project. And choose my target. And projection seems to be working well. It's contouring nicely to the surface without too much distortion. I maybe want to smooth things a little more. So I'm going to add like a, I'm going to generate a, some subdivisions. So I'm going to put that ahead of my shrink wrap and set it to simple. So just add some additional subdivisions. That way I don't have to go back and make the geometry more complex on that level. Or I could even use a geometry node to help the subdivide it that way. Uh, but that's a completely different lesson. So if you look at some straight on, you can see the text proportions are perfect, straight on. So everything is working nicely. So next, let's try the extrude. Add modifier, and we're going to solidify. And I'll set this to positive, and we'll start to do our extrusion. Okay, actually, I'm leaving that aside at negative one and extruding out positively. Okay, so as you can see, we're actually getting a nice clean extrusion off our surface. Now, as you can see, as long as you have clean topology on your text, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to not only the surfaces it can flow over, but also you can actually change the angle. It doesn't have to be perfectly square. You can scale it long as the projection is staying relatively within the borders of the geometry, the geometry's width and height, it's fine. And then once you're happy with your projected text, of course you can just lock in certain details so that it maintains your geometry. So you could actually just apply all your modifiers.